So when it comes to singing in the home studio, what can you do to make sure that you get your best quality recording? Well, it kind of breaks down to five main areas and five tips. So what I'm going to do is take you through the five tips that I have and that I pass on to folks when they ask me about recording their singing, their vocals. Now, first and foremost, I am not a professionally trained singer, but I have been singing for probably 25, 30 years, and I've recorded more than 100 vocal performances in singles and videos and EPs and albums over that time. So I've worked out what works for me over that time, and that's the important distinction to make up front here. A lot of times you'll hear advice from folks and they'll say, do this, do that, do this, do that, boom, you'll be perfect. I don't believe in that. I believe in take on ideas, try them for yourself, what works, use and implement, what doesn't, don't use. So these are not things that I say, Pete says I must, these are things that Pete says work for me, maybe they'll work for you. Let's jump in. Number one is preparation. Prepare, proper preparation prevents poor performance. Ever heard that, the five Ps? Yeah, it come, it's, it's definitely true for singing. So knowing the lyrics, knowing the melody, practicing a bunch before you hit record. This will build your confidence. There's nothing worse than hitting record and then going, oh, what was that lyric there? Oh, does, does that melody go up there or down there? Like you don't have to go nuts with this. You don't have to plan it all out and be perfect, but you do want to get some practice in. So if you're singing a cover song, singing someone else's song or even your own song, make sure you spend some time in the practice phase, get the preparation right. It'll make the end performance so much better. Tip number two, technique. Now, specifically mic technique, because when you're singing, you're generally using a microphone of some description. So number one tip is not to eat the mic. I know when you see those posters and things, people are so close up on the mic that it's like, yeah, it's like they're actually eating the microphone. Now, that's, that may work on a live stage. So if you're using a, a, a studio, not a studio, if you're using a dynamic microphone on stage, an SM58, something like that, then yeah, you might need to get up close on that thing to prevent feedback and to prevent interference and other things. However, in the studio, especially if you're using a condenser microphone, give yourself about 20 centimeters, you know, around about eight inches away from the microphone, you're going to get a more balanced signal. Using a pop filter is also highly recommended. So some sort of pop filter, pop shield, foam cover, it means your popping P's won't be as poppy and your sibilant S's won't be as hissy. So mic technique and the stuff you use with your microphone, tip number two. Number three, microphone choice. Now, you may need to use the mic you have, and that's cool, but if you're using the mic you have, experiment with it. Learn how to get the best sound. Get the best you can from the equipment you already have. That's always my number one tip when it comes to gear. But if you're considering upgrading, think about your voice. My voice is loud, so oftentimes I'll use a dynamic microphone. If I'm singing a loud rock song, I want a dynamic mic. So if you're a metal singer, if you're a rock singer, if you've got a really loud, booming voice, you may want to go for something simple like a, an SM58 or an AKG D5, one of these dynamic cardioid microphones, the handheld style. However, if you've got a softer voice where you want to bring out the clarity, you want to really hear every note and get that, get that quality coming through, then maybe a condenser microphone, a large diaphragm condenser mic like something like the Audio Technica AT2020. And by the way, if you are in the market for gear, you can head over to studiolivetoday.com slash gear. That is my gear guide with all of my recommendations for stuff to use in the studio. Tip number four, speaking of gear, what other gear do you need? Well, you don't really need anything, but the one bit of kit that is pretty important when you're singing, or at least when you're recording and singing in the home studio, is your cans, your headphones. So I recommend closed back headphones. These are the Sennheiser HD280 Pro. If you're watching on the video, if you're listening on the podcast, you can look those up or check out uh, studiolivetoday.com slash gear. These are a closed back headphone, which means that the ear cup goes all the way around my ear. And that's important because it blocks out the noise and it blocks that bleed getting back into your vocals. And bleed isn't the worst thing in the world, but too much bleed can really impact your performance. The other thing is your audio interface, whatever you're plugging into and again even if it's just plugging into your phone whatever it is if you can set the input gain try to set that gain so that it's right in the sweet spot if it's too low you're not going to get enough volume through if it's too high it's going to be clipping you want to be aiming to hit about 50 to 70 percent 
on your input meters. That will give you the best possible quality while still getting a nice signal through. And finally, your output of the actual recording. So whatever you're singing along to, make sure that that level is high enough that you can hear it, but low enough that it's not going to bleed through and you're still going to be able to hear your own vocal, your own singing. So just play around with that balance until you find, again, what works for you because what works for you may not be what works for other people. I know vocalists that need really loud audio into their headphones. It's the only way that they can really get into the song. So yeah, you sacrifice a bit of bleed, but you get your best vocal performance. Tip number five, <sighs> relax. Really, just relax. We're in a digital environment, right? So you basically have unlimited retries. You can keep trying again and again, and you can always boop, hit the delete key. You can get rid of it, you can get rid of your recording, and you don't have to keep it. So just do your absolute best, but relax into it. Sing like nobody is watching or listening is a good advice, good bit of advice too, because the challenge I have, the challenge that a lot of folks have is they tend to sing within themselves. So they tend to sing at about 70 to 80%, which would be like, I want to rock with you in the thing, as opposed to, I want to rock with you in the thing. So yeah, let it go. It's easier to go too intense and dial back than to not be intense enough and then have to find that extra energy. So pretend you're a rock and roll singer in a hairband, do whatever you need to do. And remember, music is supposed to be fun. Enjoy the process. If you're happy and you're comfortable, that will truly come out in your voice and the quality of your singing and your vocal recordings.